There is a reverence to bees. There is also a reverence to the gods. Now, don't you think in some way that we should actually be revering them because they're actually keeping us alive as opposed to the other way around. They're absolutely beautiful creatures. They're God's creatures and if we don't protect them, then we're not protecting ourselves. Look, there we go. Honey was considered so sacred as a gift from the bees. The honey was not sold until the end of the 19th or in, into the 20th century. Most of the honey was given away as a gift. It is one of the most beneficial and healing substances that we can imagine. It has enzymes, it has nutrients, it has trace minerals, and it has forces of the hexagonal, the, the silica forces in it. And silica is a substance in the Earth's mantle, about half of the Earth's mantle is silica. The silica in us is mainly in the sense organs. It is the sensing for what goes on in the surrounding. So the silica and the honey have a beneficial influence on our evolution. Mainly from the 19th century on, we have gone into controlling nature more and more. And we have lost that feeling for the sacredness. Steiner gave lectures to the workers at the Goetheanum in 1923. And Steiner said, yes, this mechanization of beekeeping, this realm of life is becoming mechanized and industrialized. And that will eventually destroy beekeeping. And the honeybee might not survive the end of the century, that is the 20th century. So now with the colony collapse disorder, it's clear that Steiner's prediction has come true. And as Steiner said that our very lives depend on beekeeping. Everybody should be interested in beekeeping. Our lives depend on it. Look at the beautiful honey. So I feel that we are seeing changes in climate, but I think the colony collapse disorder and the disappearance of the honeybee is a much more pressing, urgent problem to solve. A lot of rationalization, a lot of mechanization has gone into beekeeping to make it profitable. And that has brought down the honeybee in its vitality, in its health. It's financial, it's financial. We're accepting things that aren't ideal for the bees because we have to for the business that we're in, and we're in the business to stay in business, so we have to do it. You're gonna take 10, he's gonna take 14 when you're done here. Now we are a mobile industry. We run hundreds of thousands of miles every year. Without the omnivores and the high price, we would never have survived. The almond crop is our fastest growing, most profitable export crop here in California. Every February, just around Valentine's Day, has become the, the single greatest pollination event in the world. Bees from the entire country, far away as New England and, and, and Wisconsin and Minnesota and Florida, get on trucks in the middle of the winter, and three quarters of all bees in America come to California to perform this absolutely critical act where they have to be woken up, strengthened with high fructose corn syrup. I mean, if there's anything more kind of viscerally offensive, it's the idea of 
feeding the creators of honey, high fructose corn syrup. When we feed the corn syrup, uh, we hope that there's enough natural uh, nectar and honey on the hive to supplement whatever feed they get out of the syrup. In uh, Europe and America, they are using a thing called uh, oxytetracycline or tetramycin in the sugar. The, the bees consume the sugar, they then transfer it up into the honey. Now you eat that honey, you, you eat that honey, it's got oxytetracycline or, or tetramycin in it, and you then become resistant to that antibiotic. There is a 600,000 acre monoculture of almonds in the Central Valley. Problem is that every one of those trees, every one of those blossoms needs a bee to visit it. Yet if there is nothing but almonds in the Central Valley, there is nothing to eat for the bees for the 50 weeks of the year that the almonds aren't in bloom. So there essentially are no bees around. It's not sustainable. Two or three years ago, there were not enough bees in America to pollinate the whole crop, so the USDA gave permission to the growers to import bees from Australia. Now, as it happened, Australian bees harbor certain viruses that are unfamiliar to American bees. Israeli acute paralysis virus is one of them. We brought that in to pollinate the almonds. That's where all the bees of America mixed. We've created this great bee bordello, as one beekeeper put it. We constantly intermix from all over the country. So if they've got something in one part of the country, like tracheomite, and we don't have it in our part of the country, we certainly will have it because the migratory nature of beekeeping spreads all these pests at a very rapid rate. We don't have a single event that causes the bees to go way downhill. It's a little bit here and a little bit there. The semi-load trips, I believe, cause huge stress on it. Once the hive starts getting stressed to a certain point, then it can no longer cope with many of these other things. And that extra stress is just enough to put it over the edge. So many of the problems we face come down to one thing, and that is monoculture. There are many attractions to monoculture. It's efficient, but from the point of view of nature, it's, it's insane. And monocultures are the reason that the bees are struggling. And monoculture is the original sin of agriculture. Now, the trouble with monoculture is it's, it's an absolute distortion of the way an ecosystem works. Because what you do with a monoculture is you take your vibrant ecosystem, you destroy it, and then you put, all, put in place all the things that you just took out. So instead of having uh, natural fertilizers in the soil, you add uh, inorganic fertilizers. Instead of allowing a natural ecosystem around pests to develop, you have to use pesticide. So what's the connection with bees? Uh, as far as uh, the industrial agricultural corporations are concerned. Uh, the solution that's being offered is to destroy the insects that, that make food possible. And this is the disaster that they're ready to force on us. It used to be a continuous paradise for honeybees from Pennsylvania all the way through South Dakota, the whole northern part of the country. But now there's just huge, huge expanses of it are just monocrops of corn and soybeans. The fence rows are all gone. The bees can't even live there. There's not enough for the bees to survive on in a continuous cornfield. They, they, they'll starve to death. <laughs>